Thank you, Dieter. That was a nice greeting from your garden. <laughs> I played the guitar yesterday in my garden as well. So thanks a lot. Okay. So this is a bit weird for us to uh, speak in front of a computer and uh, discuss uh, our themes and subjects here, especially if people listen, because usually we work a lot together, um, especially on, on projects you initiated over the years uh, with the um, citizen assemblies and of course on starting this foundation here. And we thought it would be a good idea as a first introduction to the co-creation foundation in this series of savants if we just sort of pick up our thread of discussions where we left it in a formal way the last time which was almost two years ago when the both of us met for a couple of days uh, at may place uh, close to oldenburg and we had a beautiful days in in the summer with discussing democracy, citizen assembly, the co-creation foundation, and the idea of how co-creation as a cultural can, technique can contribute to global governance. And we made a video, a small video team came and they uh, shot while we were cooking our dinner. And we showed that on YouTube yesterday, this 50 minute video, and this is, um, where we want to go back, look at what has happened in the last two years, and then maybe make a small analysis where we are at the moment with the foundation and our idea of bringing better participatory forms of governance to global politics. And um, hopefully we can raise enough questions um, that we have a fruitful discussions with all the other participants of this salon afterwards. I'm not sure if we should introduce ourselves, but maybe with a, just two or three words, but yeah. most who, who are uh, invited know, know about us and our work. So maybe the question would be to start off um, looking back two years, at that time, that was before Fridays for Future, before Corona, um, still we talked about global governance and how co-creation could become a solution for, for example, for something like the climate crisis. Yes, that was really only two years ago. <laughs> and um, first, perhaps to say two things that you can, you have a little clue about my background. Um, I'm on the one hand, democracy activist and um, in the board and since 25 years working on democracy. And in the other hand, I'm living in an eco village like Dieter and I founded it. This is called Tempelhof. This is in Germany, in the South of Germany. And this is my, um, real um, experience labor to not only be in the theory but live practical the things we wanted to reach in the big society we first tried in our small community does it work how, how could be a future living together working together deciding together creating together mm -hmm. and it's really interesting that um, Two years ago, Fridays for Future didn't exist. It's like, that's right. And and we and we thought about perhaps we will need a different global governance system or governance systems to deal with complex problems. And it seemed a little bit like in the future we need that. And now it's right now that we need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, two years, a lot of stuff happened. Like. Fridays for Future came and suddenly climate change was the big discussion. I, in, in, in my experience for the last two years, it was sort of the biggest uh, 
global um, subject and discussion about climate change. It was all on the youth and on the whole initiative Greater brought forward. And that initiated quite a lot of thinking about new formats of democracy. I mean, your initiative with citizens assemblies on a national level, um, that was inspired by Fridays for Futures as well, wasn't it? And on the, on really the average citizen assembly? Yeah. Um, Not really by Fridays, um, because it's uh, Extinction Rebellion. They are in favor of citizens assemblies and our roots are Ireland and British Columbia and Canadian in, in, in Canada. Okay. I think uh, when I think back the last 20 years, um, it's totally new that within such a short period of time, a totally new format of democracy is rising and spreading all over the world. Mm -hmm. That is new, at least for me when I think back. We have now assemblies or climate assemblies in France, in Spain, in the UK. Uh, I had a call from Israel right now last week uh, from Switzerland. We in Germany are planning for one and that is only the beginning and of course we need assemblies on the European and perhaps later on on an international level to bring in all the decentralized knowledge of the people and the government and the economy and the civil society and the politicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These, these citizen assembly are at the moment on a national level, but we, we at the Corporation Foundation want to speak about the, the global uh, um, realm as well. So um, do you see a connection there from having the citizens assembly now i mean from from our perspective from the foundation um yes there's this new format of citizens assembly being picked up nationally in many many countries at the moment especially for something like climate change but i think we would also agree that it there is no solution yet how to from this national level move on to a global level. And another thing we could discuss today as well is how do we move from deliberative democracy as is the sort of mode of acting in, in citizens assembly to a more co-creative mode. Do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, I have some thoughts on that because an, a citizens an assembly is not only the process uh, which you see on television or, or you read in the newspaper. There is a pre-processed, post-processed. Mm -hmm. And for me, one big learning is who is able, and not as an organization, but as a person, to hold that big spaces mm -hmm. and who really can not only moderate them, but design processes that really on a level not only in a cognitive but also in an emotional perhaps body wise or also spiritual way when you put all the, those four levels who can hold that spaces not only in a community but in 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 a country like germany or european wide or internationally there you have to develop personal skills that I, I don't many people who are really capable to do that. We saw this in our assembly last year. There are not so much moderators who could really do the job practically. Mm -hmm. So we also need, and we, we need a, something like an academy or a development or an education for people to train, to build that skills we need for European or um, international processes. Mm -hmm. So you would say there, there are the citizens assembly on a national level and now we have to, well, basically this was what we want to do with the Co-Creation Foundation, isn't it? Like it's right. how we build the capacity um, to design and facilitate processes on a level beyond the national level, on, a, on an international or global level. Yeah. 
and that is not only a, a question of language, of course that is a problem, but it's, it's a question of who can hold that um, amount of complexity, mm -hmm. who can, on a, and, and that's not a thing that is theoretically outside, but really to, in your inner space, hold that complexity that you have when you do a process like this. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. you say that is a prerequisite for um, for being more co-creative than yes. creative. Yeah, of course. And yeah. you know that uh, yeah. because you've done you've done a lot of processes. And yeah. I remember when you told me that uh, that was for me very inspiring. When you go with your partner to a process, and when you realize that you're struggling when you go on the journey to that process then you know that this kind of struggle is just a mirror of the struggle you, which you're facing, which you're expecting in that process. Mm -hmm. So on a... So, yeah, you, the, this you, transpersonal right. aspect of what's happening in yourself is also happening in the, in the larger political process. Yeah. Right. Mm. This uh, vice versa process. Yeah. It's a very, and I very think that is totally underestimated. Yeah, well, it's something which doesn't happen in politics at the moment. Like if we, if we look into politics or governance as it is at the moment, like if we take the Corona crisis, for example, we're just now in it and probably with climate change, some, something of a much larger scale will still come. Then we see politics acting in single measures yeah and trying to find direct solutions to problems they probably haven't even yet analyzed enough i mean i'm we had this discussion a couple of weeks ago i'm pretty amazed that um that that we uh, there's a chat I'm just looking. I can't read the chat at the moment, so uh, we'll, we'll come to that later. Sorry. Um, so at the moment, there, there are a lot of political uh, there's political action, but this kind of process where we really try to, as a collective, understand what's happening with us in this crisis and where we want to go from here on, that doesn't really happen and that would be part of of these new governance structures wouldn't it yeah and you see at the corona crisis uh, you can really see how this um the real conscious level where the people are this is the crisis mode and in the crisis mode they react and they try to deal with the problem and this is at the moment i would say based on the one hand on fear and, and on the other hand, on control mm -hmm. and on the thinking that the problem is outside. And we, ha we have to fix a problem outside. We have to control it, isolate it, put it in quarantine. Like uh, the virus is the fish and the fish is sick and we have to deal for the fish instead of cleaning the tank or realizing that we are part of the system and we are part of the problem. Mm -hmm. So this old control linear thinking is reflected in the measures politics provide us worldwide. And that is for me super, not su yeah, surprising how, and there you can see where the real consciousness level on the globe is today. Mm -hmm. And you have only a few examples of, of, of countries who behave in a different way, like Sweden. Yeah. What, what do you see different there in Sweden? I mean, we have uh, people from Sweden now here in the, in the salon. And that's interesting, be interesting what, they would, what they would think later. But in my, yeah. my, my the, the main difference is they don't focus totally on control, but on um, ratio and consciousness. And they say, you have to think and decide yourself. They believe more in, the, in people than at least in Germany, the politicians do. It's more patronizing here, and this is less patronizing there. 
And you would say that's a different consciousness level. So there's, yes. uh, on the one hand side, there is sort of linear problem solving and maybe even paternalism. On the, on the other hand, there is a more fluid adaptation to what individuals choose to do for themselves, or how would you describe that? Yeah, yeah, that, that's the right, that, that goes in the right direction, yeah, I think so. Or to speaking in uh, sp spiral dynamic terms, uh, the, uh, the most action we see are blue, it's good and right, and it's uh, inside and outside, and it's black and white and things like that, and it's more um, the, the orange or a little bit the green meme, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we really want to think about global governance structures. And then when I look at them, I always see, okay, we have the, we have the United Nations and we have a lot of institutions which are part of the United Nations. The United Nations have been founded after Second World War. And there were, there was, it was a global governance designed to secure peace, basically, so that not another world and it was built on the design principles of um, centralized big almost federal institutions um, where the parts would be the nations as the United Nations a couple of weeks ago someone said to me well maybe that is the sort of the biggest problem they, they're yeah. talking about nations the, these yeah. nations are united, but still nations are the main actors yes. in this sphere. And there is neither a sort of common understanding or common global body formed, but there are administrations basically. And, and if we now look at something like Corona or um, at climate change with Corona, we should have something like, or we do have the WHO, the World Health Organization, um, which kind of is something between a think tank, an act tank, uh, uh, an administration. It doesn't have formal power. It only can make suggestions. Um, it's financed by states and private entities, for example, foundations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And they are in a really difficult position because I feel you usually don't hear very much about the World Health Organization unless something is happening. And if so, even though they do a lot of work, I mean, they, they are trying to prevent us from pandemics, for example, but you don't hear about this work yeah. unless the pandemic is coming. And if the pandemic is coming, they are in this really bad situation that if they act really fast and hard on it, everyone will say, and they succeed in sort of bringing the pandemic down, everyone will say, why did you spend so much money? Why did you make such a fuss? Why were you so alarmist? Uh, why did you uh, propose all these measures and in the end nothing happened? So we're not going to fund you anymore. Or if the WHO waits too long and the pandemic really sort of spreads, everyone will say, well, you didn't give us notice in due time. So what's the use of, of having this institution? And I was wondering over the last weeks, looking at that, like, what could more co-creative governance structure look in health governance, for example? And the same, and this is probably the much bigger problem that applies to climate change. Yeah. We have the conferences, everyone travels there, they meet in huge halls and they do a lot of negotiation. Um, but then what? Yeah, and is that sufficient? Yeah, but this is our old dispute a little bit, Yasha. Um, because on the one hand, it's a problem that the nation states are the main actors. But on the other hand, I think if we are not 
able to change the structures of nation states, how could we think that on a bigger level we have we could as we could reach co-creative structures? Who are the people who should build that? Yeah, and that's my, my that's my my main problem with um, the European and the international level, that we have, of course, we have to overcome the nation states, but not to abolish them, but to um, rebuild them too. Otherwise, we um, just pump we just um, pump up the problem. Then we have not not a nationalism on only in a country but on the european or in the, in the international sphere and what is uh, at least more um important the way of cooperating in today's time in parliaments is based on competition and fragmentation yeah we have in the parliament we have parties and in germany we have, you say fraction and fractions and yeah. this is a parse Latin. This is a part, by definition, not the whole, but fragmented. And the future will be how we can overcome this fragmented and on competition-based way of cooperating, not only in civil society or in economy, but, but also in parliament. So we need totally new parliamentarian structures and how could we think on parliaments how could we think in structures which are like resonance based formats which are um where people and parliamentarians try really try together to create collective intelligent processes that nervous systems of the parliamentarians really could synchronize because the when you have really and we all know that all know that when we have collective intelligent spheres everybody is getting more intelligent not only the we but everybody is rising the, the perception is rising ideas are coming down emerging processes could happen and how could we create spaces we all know in communities or in special meditation realms and or otherwise, how can we trans transport this knowledge into politics? That is for me the biggest challenge. And that is what we should try and work on and do the first experiment. experiment. Yeah. So Anna Demo yesterday asked me, is that still a democracy now? Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think so. The contest of ideas and worldviews <laughs> the parties represent at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. When you think in democracy as a, um, as a limited concept, yes, then it could be another form of democracy. Mm -hmm. It's perhaps another form of governance. You can say that the development of governance structures. Yeah. Yeah. And perhaps so, have, you're, yeah. so you're basically suggesting we have to start with the nation states, reforming political governance system on a nation state with new formats of democracy, as for example, citizens assembly, even though they might still be deliberative. These yes. are new formats for a first step in the right direction. Then from there on, we can move on to more co-creative formats and i understand i mean you made this point of you're living in an eco village and i know from my uh, times with ecological projects and communities and permaculture that th this is actually where we learned how to um, foster creative uh, 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 collective intelligence and how to combine political process with inner work with uh, healing collective trauma, with addressing the processes which are behind the rational logic of um, politics and, and, um, and positions of single persons? Like, can we look beyond the position of 
a party, for example. So I, when I hear you, I, what I'm hearing is you say we need a political parliament or some institutions, bodies, which are actually able to do all that, to, to listen to the whole and to make um, decisions with, which serve the whole and not only parts. Right. Yeah. It's not that we have to do first the whole job on a national level and then go on the European or international. We can do both, but we cannot forget the national level and sort of bypass it and hope that we will get something better on the international level. Yeah. We have to do our homework on, on all the levels. And I'm, I totally agree that that means that we need a different form of politicians. Um, so um, we need politicians who are able to integrate something like body, mind, heart, spirit in a coherence or are on a personal way or are always um, working also on the inside, not only on the outside. Yeah. And, and in a way you're, you're making me hope because um, we with our institute for fitting mm -hmm. part of it, we, we have been doing this work in municipalities, communities, cities over the last 14 years. And I would totally agree that without these experiments on a smaller level, we wouldn't have enough expertise what, how to facilitate these processes on a national level and then maybe later on an international level. Yeah. We will not develop them on an international level and then trickle it down to the nations and the cities. It's usually the, the other way uh, up. So the most innovative projects in terms of co-creation my understanding at the moment are on local levels. It's small villages, communities, uh, cities, towns, uh, where, where there are experiments with it. Still, we founded the, or we are an, about to found the Co-Creation Foundation to bring this knowledge to the global level because this is where at the moment we really need it. Like we yeah. need to find solutions to climate change and believe we believe it can't be done in the mindset and the paradigm where politics is at the moment. Yeah. And you said just uh, in one sentence, one uh, very important, um, you mentioned a very important issue. You said, you, you quoted, you said about collective trauma. We have to integrate and focus on also on collective trauma. When you look in the world today, you also can see the reflection or mirroring of a, of a big collective or global trauma, I think. Mm -hmm. At least I watched this in Germany. Many people also in my community are um, triggered by things of the Third Reich, like, or in the East, or in East Germany, like uh, the, uh, the East German socialistic system. We have things like how is it called? Pest, pestilencia, or how you say that? Yeah. Pest. What? What is? Pest. Is it in English? I have no idea, actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this, 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 things are coming up. Plague. Plague. Yeah. yeah. Plague yeah. times are behind our in our ancestral lines, yeah. and what we are really trying. Um, um, because per perhaps the others don't know, we are planning a next uh, citizens' assembly on a national level on climate change, and then we said we want to have an update of of assemblies, not only deliberating and uh, focusing and on the co cognitive level, but also starting to integrate emotional levels in an assembly and also the body and also spiritual things. Yeah, because when you um, face climate change, you always are meeting a point of shock and non-belief and disassociation and frustration and apathy and all this kind of stuff. And normally, there is no space to share this or to deal with this. And, we've, and we want to try to 
create the first spaces and designs where that uh, this emotion and things also can be addressed mm -hmm. yeah and this is why uh, i i count on you yasha <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just struggle with a small sort of visualization because Alistair always uh, asks me to explain what I mean by deep co-creation and I feel there are sort of four spheres. Uh, one sphere is politics, the other sphere I'm coming from is design and there's activism and there's spirituality and I feel that deep co-creation, how I understand it, sort of is rooted in all four of these uh, spheres or aspects. So it is about politics and making decisions, uh, collective decisions about what has to be done and in what way. It is about design, about being innovative, creative, finding good solutions for the challenges we have. It is about activism, getting into action and really pushing things forward and it's also about spirituality about the sort of deep conscious learning and process work we have to do on an individual and collective level and i feel that in order to to get here to deep co-creation we kind of have to make changes to all four of these spheres there there are already uh corporations like there is something like spiritual activism there is something like policy design so things do already happen but only if they come together and if they all kind of go on to the next level i feel we can come to something which i would call deep co-creation and for example for for politics it's what you just said it has to move from speaking for certain in groups to speaking for the whole um, for spirituality, for example, I feel it needs to go away from uh, sort of pure navel gazing to getting better connection to sort of the outer world, like understanding that spirituality is every day's practice in this world and has to connect us with this world. Um, activism, I think, could need to become or would need to be more compassionate rather than antagonistic not so much the fighting mode than the sort of maybe loving warrior mode uh, we have to embrace and and in design i often feel the ethics are completely missing it's all about right. it's all about users and marketing and the next uh cool invention and the next button on, on, a, on a gadget um but it's less about um ethics so my my understanding for deep co-creation is if we could move a step forward in all these four aspects and if we understand that these aspects belong together that and then can combine that in the processes and formats of uh dem democratic um solution finding understanding process work and um, then we would probably get there yeah yeah you have um, one minute, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's perfect because I saw that uh, Tom is Tom was leaving, and he yeah. put in the quote my favorite poem of Rilke. I'm really Actually, touched, touched by this. Yeah. And, um, and perhaps we that that is a good point to open up uh, the discussion. And I I would love to. I think we raised enough questions. Yeah. And. Um, maybe together as a group now we can also come up with ideas and yeah solutions. and just to just to bring it together is I, today i read somewhere panic panic everything is out of control and i think the next step will be relax relax everything is out of control <laughs> <laughs> that, that is what we have to do within ourselves yeah. to focus that we are facing times of um, not knowing and times of uh, that things are getting really out of control. Yeah. Yeah.
and not be overwhelmed by fear and anger or, or resistance or things like that. And this needs also personal practice. There's this Swiss anarchist, PM, he writes nice books. Bolo Bolo is one of them. Yeah, I know. The, the other one is called Subcoma. And on the back cover of Subcoma, he says, if the crisis comes, switch off the radio, open the window, and take a deep breath. Yeah, right. So, so we can open up now. We can have detail for another piece of music and then the poem by Tom, and then we're up to discussion. Um, could you switch everyone in? Dieter first. Yeah. Hi, Dieter. You're okay. still muted. Yep. Maybe it fits well to what you are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you now a more global sound with my oud. The oud is an Arabic lute. And I will sing a song <clears throat> from separation between Israel and Palestine, but as a symbol for what you are talking about, that you have to see your own shadow and uh, light and shadow in one. And uh, <clears throat> yes. Oh. 